Hello bookworms and welcome to a, another video. If you are new here, my name is Caitlin and I talk about books. <laughs> talking about women talking I'm gonna be a woman talking about women talking by Miriam toes women talking will be published by Bloomsbury in April of this year and I believe this is this author's like fifth or sixth book she's definitely done a few others this is based on a true event and it is like a fictional response to that true event. And it says, what if justice means turning your back on everything you've known? One evening, eight Mennonite women climb into a hayloft to conduct a secret meeting. For the past two years, each of these women and more than 100 other girls in their colony has been repeatedly violated in the night by demons coming to punish them for their sins. Now that the women have learned that they were in fact drugged and attacked by a group of men from their own community, they are determined to protect themselves and their daughters from future harm. The real events, like if you're interested in religion and other cultures, just Google Mennonites in Bolivia and the Times did an article, The Guardian did an article. I went through and looked at pictures just to kind of get a sense of what they really looked like, what what does Bolivia look like. I didn't really have a point of reference besides I know that the Mennonite are similar to the Amish and that they were like an offshoot of the same religion. And so I just kind of wanted to get sort of a, a better point of reference. And it all comes kind of from the Protestant Reformation and all these offshoots of essentially the same religion, but people adding their own ideas in and um, just kind of splitting and splitting and splitting. And so um, the Mennonites in Bolivia also speak Low German, which I think the Amish are more Dutch. And so it's all like it's originated in Europe around the same places. About that in the book, how these women don't even, you know, they're contemplating leaving, right? They're contemplating leaving everything they've ever known and escaping but because women weren't allowed to be educated they weren't allowed to do anything except for take care of kids and cook and clean and so they can't even once they leave like they're not even really be able to communicate effectively at all and so these are all things this takes place this book like i said it's a fictional response so in it it it's like it's in a 24 hour period and it's definitely a really unique setup to a story. It really is something that I can't say I have ever read. And it's told from the perspective of the meeting minutes. And I thought it was a really interesting choice that the author had the narrator be a male. And he is seen as kind of lesser because he left the colony with his parents and the reason they had to leave was that he actually looked too much like the community elder and so they left he speak he's worldly and he doesn't know how to farm so they call him basically derogatory words for a woman and I don't know why she chose to have the narrator be a male when this is such a strong piece of feminist literature but I would like to think it's because she's trying to show that patriarchy these are the atrocities of a patriarchy but that doesn't mean that all men are bad and to me, that's what I got out of it. And I know there, I've seen some reviews on this where people were annoyed or upset or they saw the story as less because the narrator was a man and not a woman. But I, it feels hopeful to me, I guess. In these meeting minutes, they're really just talking back and forth. And it almost feels like field notes from an ethnography or something like that. Like they're definitely not clinical, but it's, it's almost approached in that way, so it feels really real. And you just wanna get through it. I mean, it's a short book. It's only like 200 and some pages. And 
I annotated um, things I thought were interesting. So obviously in those 200 pages, there's a lot of interesting things being said. And it's, it's disgusting. The story is sick. Like it almost made me cry multiple times because these women are talking about their injuries and, you know, one woman is pregnant from being raped. I mean, they were literally... There was a veterinarian in the community that changed the anesthesia for animals to knock these women out. And even when they came to and realized what was happening to them, I think that's what eventually led the men to be caught was that someone came to, but she still couldn't move. Like, she wanted to scream, but she could not. I mean, imagine waking up on anesthesia, you know, like, and you not being able to move. And... That to me is insane. One girl, one little girl was three years old. This takes place after the fact. I don't think the author wanted to get in that. The author is Mennonite herself. She grew up in a Mennonite community in Canada. So that gives, to me, I like to know that the author either did their research or knows what they're talking about. And you can definitely tell that she understands the complexity and the nuance of religion. Like these women aren't like, Like, it can be easy for me to say, oh, I would just leave. Oh, I would just kill them all. Oh, I would be so angry. But, you know, it's not that easy. Even though it was something terrible, there were so many, and they talk about it. Like, this is a group of eight women of a whole community that are willing to talk about maybe leaving. All of the other women are staying. It's hard. I mean, what would you do? Would you leave everything you've ever known, comfort, safety of... Safety in terms of knowing that you're going to be fed, knowing that you maybe could make a difference. Do you leave and leave behind your children? Because, you know, after a certain age, men are already baptized into the church. And so they talked about all of these nuanced issues and complicated things. And it just, I really, really appreciated that part, that it wasn't a cut and dry answer. And I think that that is why she framed it in this way, because in the meeting, they, it's people fight and they're from, you know, like feuding families, but you know, you, as women, you kind of have to decide, like, are you going to let those little things get in the way? Or are you going to agree that for the greater good, that you're going to move on together in the hopes that your children's lives will be different. And they and they mention that through metaphor, which is actually really beautiful. One of the characters, Ona, mentions about dragonflies and butterflies and how they start the migration and it's they're going to die while they're migrating, but they're doing it so that their grandchildren do you call them grandchildren when they're butterflies get to that destination and I thought that that was really beautiful you know do you do it anyway even though you know that it's not for you that it's for generations after you and it just felt really powerful like maybe the most powerful piece of fictional literature that I've read in a really long time it's not even, it, it's super feminist, but I think because it's through the lens of religion that maybe it's easier to look at the religion part, see how it factors in to the patriarchy or to, and I couldn't help but to think about all of these books and studies that I've read about cultures where their creation story starts with women being equal to men and how that through hundreds of years still those women are seen as more or less equal but in cultures where like Christianity where Eve is from the day one (laughs) considered evil we have things like Mennonite communities where women are just supposed to raise kids and that's it. I really liked it. I mean, I feel like it's not a five star for me review, but it's really, it's so good. And it's very like, Margaret Atwood um, read it and reviewed it, who did The Handmaid's Tale. And it feels like that, but the fact of the matter is that The Handmaid's Tale was 100% a work of fiction and that 
women talking is it it really happened at the end i thought that this was so good like i might just get choked up thinking about it but um this is from the narrator that his name was august and he says the purpose was for me to take them the minutes life i was thinking like why meeting minutes and it took until literally the second to last page when he says the purpose was for me to take them the minutes life and so it's just really beautiful from a literary standpoint these parallels like yeah we're talking about meeting minutes but we're also talking about minutes and, and being alive and the choices that you're going to make. You know, are you going to, what, I mean, what kind of life do you want to live? And th what's really intriguing, and they do touch on it here, is that the Mennonites are a pacifist religion. They do not believe in violence of any kind. And for this to happen to their community, so violent. And now these women are conflicted, you know, are we violent in retaliation? Are, you know, it, it, they're just so conflicted because they have these rules that they live their lives by and it makes things easy or at least easier, you know? And you can say, okay, these are the, these are the rules. Yes or like, and here's the situation. Does it fit? Yes or no? And something like this made them question all of that and, and decide like, ultimately, what are our main goals? And these eight women decided that their goals were to be able to still have their religion, but have their own brains to think and to protect their kids. To them, that was the most important, that they wanted to be able to be more than an animal. They wanted to be able to use their brain. They wanted to be able to practice their religion, and they wanted their kids to be safe. And so ultimately, you'll have to read it to figure out what their decision was, you should read it. It's like, it felt important. And I don't know that I remember this being in the news about the community in Bolivia, but as I thought about it, growing up, I think my family had a friend that was like a missionary to Bolivia. I feel like he wasn't a Mennonite, but now, I mean, it made me like wonder like, hmm, because I was really little, I don't really remember like what his religion was. I feel like Baptist but I guess it could have been Mennonite. Anyway, yes, what I take away from it is how do you want to spend your minutes? Are you quick to th assume that you will know how another person, culture, religion will react to a situation? Or do you take time to consider the 100,000 million different aspects that make it complicated and nuanced and not easy or cookie cutter? And, you know, it just makes everyone more empathetic it make if it makes me more empathetic to realize that sometimes i i'm like oh just leave just leave just set the whole village on fire you know but when you're in it and that's your life and there are other people involved and you know it's just it's and the law is involved it's just it, it's just not that easy and this feels really like the author at the end she says I wish also to acknowledge the girls and women living patriarchal authoritarian mennonite and non-mennonite communities across the globe love and solidarity and it just reminds you that you're really privileged if you're watching this in a western country we're really privileged and we have it really good and yeah, that we still have our, I mean, just think of the hurdles that we still have to overcome. Imagine in places that haven't made the strides that we have made. And that should, for me at least, it that lights me up. That makes me want to be more active and, and be that butterfly that starts migrating, even though I might not see the change. That doesn't mean the change isn't going to happen. And so... I love books. It's going to make me cry. So, hope you guys enjoyed this review. Put this on your to be read. It comes out in April. It deserves a read. It's quick. Come on. You can read it. Um, even audiobook. That would be for a commute. Google it. Learn the real story too. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.